Hey guys, welcome back for another video. My name is Atif Shanawaz. I'm an internal medicine doctor and I make videos explaining medical concepts in layman's terms. In this video, I'm going to go over the latest advances in the treatment of post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. And specifically, I'm going to explore how a drug called 3,4-methylene dioxymethamphetamine, more commonly known as MDMA, is being rediscovered as a promising drug in the treatment of this disorder. Post-traumatic stress disorder, as you may already know, is a complex syndrome that occurs after an episode of severe psychological trauma. And the diagnosis is usually only made about a month after the event because before that, an acute stress response is considered to be a normal response to a traumatic event. Sexual violence like rape and abuse is one of the more common reasons that PTSD occurs, accounting for about 30% of all cases, but other scenarios can also lead to this as well, such as the unexpected death of a loved one, the life-threatening illness of a child, witnessing violence being committed, combat operations in war, motor vehicle accidents, and even natural disasters, they can all potentially lead to PTSD. A patient with PTSD will often have intrusive thoughts, nightmares, flashbacks, and what's called hypervigilance, a sense of needing to be on the alert at all times, which can be very emotionally draining, leaving little room for normal emotional expression. And these symptoms can alter the course of a patient's life, often leading to severe difficulty in interpersonal relationships, and it also leads to an increased risk of substance abuse and even suicide. So 3,4-methylene dioxymethamphetamine was discovered in Germany in 1912 by the drug company Merrick. They were trying to invent a blood clotting agent, but they discovered this thing instead. Then 60 years passed without much attention, if any, being drawn to the drug until a chemist in California called Alexander Shulgin was told about the mind-altering properties of MDMA by a student of his who happened to have tried the drug. Dr. Shulgin was keenly interested and already quite experienced in various psychedelic drugs and he formulated MDMA in his own lab in 1976 and within a few years he had passed on his experiences of the drug to various psychiatrist friends of his in and around California, which is where he lived. And by the early 1980s, a handful of psychiatrists had started using the drug in their clinical practice. Now, by this time, there was strong anecdotal data coming out of those people about the usefulness of MDMA for post-traumatic stress disorder as well as other psychiatric conditions. However, at the same time, MDMA also became popular in the party scene, especially in dance and rave circles, and law enforcement regularly came to see this drug as purely a recreational enterprise. By 1985, over the protests of psychiatrists who testified to its clinical utility, MDMA was nevertheless entered as a Schedule I drug on an emergency basis, and this effectively choked off any further clinical exploration of the drug. And that is where things stood for the next 15 years. The resurrection of MDMA as a drug with therapeutic potential is mostly due to the efforts of a man called Rick Doblin, who founded the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies, or MAPS, in 1986. They had the expressed aim of exploring the clinical applications of MDMA and psychedelics in the context of well-designed, rigorous clinical trials. And in 1999, the first such trial was launched in Madrid and it was specifically designed to explore the therapeutic potential of MDMA for PTSD in women who were victims of sexual violence. It took another 10 years, until 2010, for the results of the first well-designed clinical trial to be completed in Charleston, South Carolina. Patients with treatment-resistant PTSD, meaning they didn't respond to psychotherapy or antidepressants, were carefully chosen and prior to the MDMA session, the patient had multiple psychotherapy sessions with the clinician to establish a therapeutic relationship between the clinician and patient. And then they got the drug. After receiving the drug, the patient would immediately thereafter have an eight hour long psychotherapy session that was specifically aimed at targeting their PTSD. Now, the results of this first study were fairly dramatic. Two months after receiving MDMA-assisted psychotherapy, 80% of subjects were considered to be symptom-free and no longer met the diagnostic criteria for PTSD. Of the clinical trials done to date, the protocols are designed so that patients could receive a second dose a month later and potentially a third dose in session a month after that. Now, it should be obvious, but I'll state it anyway, 
The MDMA was not used as a medication that was to be taken daily, like an antidepressant, but it was used only up to three times within strictly controlled therapeutic environments. Phase two double-blind randomized control trial was published in 2018, and the results were much the same. MDMA-assisted psychotherapy seemed to demonstrate a remarkable ability to help patients with PTSD, often curing them completely in just several sessions. Now, the main approach of psychotherapy in general, in PTSD, is to have the patient relive in their minds the traumatic experience underlying their PTSD. And as the anxiety and the fear begin to increase, the psychotherapist aims to redirect those emotions. However, so severe is the emotional and the physical reaction to reliving those experiences that patients often become quite avoidant, and a proper redirection proves to be very difficult. However, when a patient takes MDMA, all sense of fear goes away. There is also increased sense of social bonding and trust, and it also promotes the feelings of love and compassion. And this is all accomplished without decreasing the level of alertness or logical thinking, unlike as occurs with, say, alcohol or marijuana, where you're just going to get hammered. And it's because of these effects that psychiatrists in the 1980s were intrigued about the ability of MDMA to help in psychotherapy. Because under the influence of MDMA, under the guidance of an experienced clinician, when the traumatic experience is relived, the memory of the event, this time under MDMA, is processed as just a matter of fact, without fear or anxiety present. And the patient is finally able to let go or release the experience so that it no longer elicits a strong, debilitating emotional response. This is the currently accepted narrative for how MDMA helps in the treatment of PTSD. And it highlights an important point. MDMA is not a magic pill that eliminates PTSD after a few doses, but rather it is a tool used in a psychotherapeutic context under the guidance of a therapist who is already familiar with the patient. And I stress this point because MDMA has also been widely misused or used, depending on your outlook, as a party drug. And in fact, when anyone hears about MDMA, it is usually only in this context of being a party drug. Clinical trials on MDMA-assisted psychotherapy for PTSD are currently in phase three, and there are currently four phases to complete before FDA gives its approval for a drug. And so far, as of the end of 2019, less than a thousand patients have enrolled in clinical trials studying the use of MDMA. So you can make the argument that we are still very much in the early stages of this research. But so far, the results show a lot of promise. And the excitement amongst researchers is partly because severe PTSD is so notoriously difficult to treat, with the disease often causing life-altering symptoms that can last for decades. And then on the flip side, MDMA-assisted psychotherapy seems to completely cure some PTSD patients in only three sessions. Now, it doesn't cure everybody, but a lot of patients do get better. Now, I want to end with a note of caution. MDMA is sold illegally as a street drug called ecstasy or molly, but you should know that most of the time, these drugs that are called molly or ecstasy don't contain MDMA at all, or they contain very little of it, and often, those pills are adulterated with a lot of other compounds. So don't go out seeking MDMA on the street just because you heard some doctor on the internet telling you about its benefits. There's no telling what kind of drugs you're actually getting when you're getting them off the street. Now currently phase three trials are ongoing, like I said, and studies are actively recruiting participants. So if you'd like to learn more or even participate as a test subject, you can get more information on how to do so here. And I've also linked this down in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please go ahead and put them down in the comment section. Like and subscribe if you found this video valuable. And as always, I will see you all in the next video.